a little sloppy on the notes there, but you know, I'm not a professional musician. I just use the music to set a tone, set kind of a calming vibe for the show, so that the intensity that we bring to design doesn't overwhelm things. <laughs> Uh, welcome back. I feel like, I think it's been about a week since I've recorded one of these. Sort of a break, I guess. Just taking some time away, let my brain recover, kind of, uh, refresh the mentality. Did a few of these form studies for fun, um, a couple days ago, and they were coming out pretty good, so I think break worked pretty well, as far as that goes. So we're just going to start out by, I've got kind of a sketch, napkin sketch I'm working off here for a base shape. And uh, just going to try to do something that has sort of a thicker area at the bottom here, then gets thinner near the top. And maybe, maybe give a good opportunity to talk about axes, what an axis is in design sort of talk about flow in a design. So an axis is like a direction or an angle that a lot of details conform to that sort of dominates the visual language or whatever. So in this case, uh, like the dominant axis would be this 45 running up this way. Then you sort of have a minor axis um, on this reverse curve at the top where it starts to go the other direction. And uh, maybe you could say the orthogonals, or especially the horizontal, are sort of another minor, minor axis going on. So I want this to be the main axis of design, the primary line. So we'll probably structure a lot of our detail and panel breakups to match that. And of course, I'm trying to weight the mass so that it's you know thinner in some areas, larger in others. And then let's also bring in, start bringing in some other. Um, other primary forms kind of early on. I want to like integrate a cylinder down here. Maybe, uh, maybe you get that away from being a pure 45. Mess with the size a little bit. Just kind of playing around, looking at it in the bottom viewport, try to get a feel for the overall, you know, impression that these shapes make. It's all still very lightweight geometry, so this is a good time to. Uh, you know, get a sense of the proportions you want to go for. Try to imagine where you might go in terms of a large, you know, primary object breakup. Oh, whoops. I instanced that. Maybe I'll get like another. Another cylinder here that sort of starts building this axis up. Could put it outside, makes kind of an interesting negative shape. I think I'll leave it inside. Let's see how this looks if we thin this out. Uh, if I bring it up too much, it starts to feel too even all the way through, I think. Maybe a little bit. And I don't know if we'll want to round this, perhaps. Could be cool. I'll leave that an open question for now. Maybe add some more secondary objects down here at the bottom. Oh, hi kitty. Cat just walked in the room. She's clawing my leg. Try to ignore this distraction. No face cam, so I can't show you guys the cat. She's a tabby cat, about five years old. What are you doing? 
Oh, good. She's getting fur all over my clothes. That's good. <laughs> uh, I'm just putting in some more, like, secondary objects, secondary elements down here at the bottom that will end up, like, pulling the the visual weight more towards the bottom of this object and make it feel uh, like more of a contrast between the top and bottom areas. Um, if that contrast exists even in like these basic masses early on, then it should be pretty straightforward to you know detail all these out and end up with a cool, cool result. Might do something at the top here with this like hook point as well. <clears throat> Maybe even uh, curve this back down so that we get that axis reinforced. Or echoed, I should probably say. Yeah, that'll be kind of neat, I think. And then do we even want to do like something up here? Kind of neat, I think. Off to a good start. Get a camera positioned here. Something like this. Might move this around later. I just want to get a basic setup to begin with. Hmm, does that look cooler further down here? Kind of. I feel like it makes a more interesting shape. What if it was like up here? Oh, well, it's kind of neat too. I like how it like crosses over further than this. Might be weird to terminate it somehow. Hmm. I think we'll go with it like this. I think this will be neat. Now we'll get in here and start thinking about how we want to turn some of these edges. I think I will bevel this guy. As usual, even with these small bevels, I just use a bunch of sides on them because this is not going into a game. This is just for rendering. All that really matters is the visualization, how it looks. So there's no point being stingy with the edge count for anything unless you start to get <laughs> performance issues. But outside of doing like crazy subdivision values, that shouldn't really be an issue. for variety I might leave hard instead of beveling but not totally sure which ones just kind of playing it by feel not a not any hard and fast rules here might do that to echo that main axis line. Yeah, that'll look cool, I think.
And uh, I think we'll punch out. Instead of fusing this into this somehow, I think I'm going to make it, or leave it a separate element. Which means I'm just going to punch a hole through, and we'll figure out how they how they interact later. But to start with, we'll just clear out a space in this object for it. Like that, so it'll kind of uh, sit within there. Might give it more room on that side, and then... Bellows up, make some interest. gonna subdivide this just to get the density in there. We'll probably break this cylinder up into a few different uh, mesh elements as we go on. I just want to work in some like large shape transitions just to start with. Just so we start feeling some forms in this breaking the box a little bit. Gonna kinda carve this into the side, create some depth in the side of this main piece, as well as create some lines that reinforce this axis. Um, maybe we'll flare this cut in a little bit. leave that like semi flush bevel these guys to match the outer outer bevel bevel this guy and finally bevel here. Create some nice contrast with those hard edges. Cool. here as well. That's cool. Doesn't show up too much on that angle yet, but I think that's pretty nice.
think we'll get some kind of positive mass here that reinforces this gap where the cylinder is cut out of. Move that up in the stack just so that gap gets cut out of it. This gives us a part that bumps out instead of just bumping in. Although I'm thinking about how we're going to integrate with this thing. But I might just pull this up a little to give us some more space to do something like that. Matching the rotation either. There we go, that's closer. Might punch a hole through for this as well. Just try that now, see how it feels. I could probably just copy the actual object rotation from <laughs> one of these other things now that I think about it. But that's okay. Something like this. Then maybe we thin this out. And we try two of them. Hmm. I think I liked one better. Maybe if it's only wide enough to match the that might be neat. To match the side there. Something like this. Might kind of split this main object into two. Give it like a panel division around this uh, cylinder that we just put in. So we'll build the cutting shape now to do that. Want to get this edge? I'm raising this just to, so this edge runs cleanly across. We'll round these out. Slash. There we go. We got our panel cut.
thinking about how these uh, floating parts are going to interact. I think it'd be neat maybe if this was a really thin object. And then it'll connect with some like tertiary elements or something to this main hook. This I might boolean in and actually make it part of the object. Just kind of thinking out loud here. Match these bevels. Doing some basic shaping stuff here. Just trying to add a little little interest to all the forms we have that are still really basic, kind of primitive, blocky. So we start to get some character over the whole design before we dive in too much further. Not really in a rush, I think. Uh, I think I might do like a multi-parter on this one, really take it to a nice high level of detail. These last couple that I've done, uh, or that I did two or three days ago, was uh, I spent a little more time on them and I think I kind of enjoyed the end result more. It is fun to blast through them in like an hour, but if you spend two, even three hours, like or just you know twice as long as you would normally take, um, you can really take stuff to a nice level of finish that's satisfying, which obviously for portfolio stuff you always want to do that kind of thing, but um, sometimes if you've just been doing the speed stuff a lot, it's refreshing actually to go back to the more, more polished level of finish. Not listening to any music right now. Working in dead silence. No cocaine rap. I have been listening a lot to the new Pusha T album. It's almost dry. Of course he's talking about cocaine trafficking yet again. But, you know, no one does it better. Very nice album, very fun album. But right now I'm just I'm just focusing on the work. I'm working in silence. Sometimes it's nice. Just have a moment of zen, moment of calm unstimulated might even divide this up some more
Hmm. I don't really like that because I think it clashes with this. It's better to have them both squared off, I think. Let's see. Kind of like that. Getting a little bit into the secondary form stuff now, I suppose. Maybe I'll split this into like three videos. We'll do like this early setup will be one, then the next one will be a lot of secondary and connecting parts, and then the third one will just be like details, details. Maybe that will be the approach. Sounds kind of fun. Also, I have to go IRL in about 10 or 15 minutes, so that's also influencing my decision. Just doing some more basic shaping here, kind of paving the way for integrations between these objects. I really should clean this up, but from this camera angle at least it doesn't really matter. And because of the edge beveling it might not even matter if we... Uh, it kind of shows up I guess. Whatever. Could clean that, I just don't know if it'll be really important enough to bother with. This is a little too boxy. Something like this, maybe. Trying to take some of the pure boxiness out of any of these areas that still have it. This little front hook has been bothering me for a while. Yeah, that'll be that'll be okay, I think.
그리고 I do like a little tip uh, piece here or something. Not sure about the proportions on that yet. <laughs> that could be cool. <laughs> it kind of looks neat, actually. It's certainly some contrast there. Yeah, that might be neat. I might leave it like that. It was kind of a joke, but I sort of like it. Creates a very interesting negative shape. Definitely gets that axis going. Strong contrast and mass. Maybe that's a happy accident. We'll figure out what exactly is going on there later. <laughs> Maybe another fin type object up at the top here. Just see how it looks. like that or something. It's a detail we can figure out later. It's kind of a neat connection, maybe. I think I'll just leave them separate for now though, because I might decide I don't like them. Or I might integrate them in. We'll see. We'll see. This is starting to feel like a strong, strong beginning, I think. Um, I think I will do this as a multi-part or two, maybe three parts, but we'll start with this as a foundation. Then in the next one, we'll get more into rounding out all the secondary details all over it and uh, sort of integrating these parts together. But this is a good, uh, good first pass, good little quick uh, primary. We had a little secondary stuff in there for the most part, just figured out the big shapes, the big axes of the design. And, uh, yeah, so next time we'll, uh, we'll take this further. Bit of a short one, but I'll see you guys next time. Let me give you a few notes on the harp. <laughs> All right, see you.